Hello, so I made plans to travel to come pick up some vintage computer stuff, but it ended up not falling through, and I got stuck here at David's house for a few hours today, and we've been playing around with something rather interesting. This is an IBM RT. This came out in 1986, which is a bit after the AT, but before the PS2 line. This computer is using a custom RISC processor made by IBM, so it's not your 8088 or a 286 or anything like that. What's interesting, though, is IBM created their own operating system based off Unix called AIX. Now, this is where this gets really interesting. David hasn't had a lot of time to use this computer and isn't as familiar with Unix, but I'm a Linux user, so when I was over here, I was able to get this to do some pretty cool stuff, and we have it set up with a DEC VT-102 from 1978 as a terminal running a second user interface. So we're going to play around with this a little bit and check out what you could do with Unix in 1985 in a desktop form factor as opposed to a giant mainframe. All right, now we're both going to log into the same computer on the local console and the serial terminal. So we're actually both going to log in with the root user right now. There we go. And now we're both in and can do an ls command. There we go. <laughs> and we have it working. Okay, so now that we're both logged in, if I run the who command, we can see that there are two separate TTYs logged in. This one is, again, the local console, but they're both root. So we should probably make a new user just for the serial terminal over there. Right. Now, adding a user on this is actually really easy. I would originally tried to do it by modifying uh, etc. password D, and that wasn't that easy. But it turns out that for a lot of the configuration of this computer, it has sort of handholdy programs that you can use that will do a lot of system actions for you. So here we can run the users command, which is also available as add user, it turns out. And from here, we can add new users, change existing ones, or delete them, or any number of things. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new user called Serial. Okay, so to add the user serial, we're going to do a add. We're going to say we're adding a user. We're going to make the username serial. And we're going to go ahead and accept those. We do want the initial execution program to be uh, shell. This is not born again shell. This is just the shell. And uh, everything else pretty much looks good. We do want a new user directory, which interestingly, the user directory here is slash u, not slash home. But after all that, it is done. So we can exit this with Q and then go ahead and log off on your VT102 here. So just control D and now we can see if I run who, there is only mine logged in and now log in as serial. Bingo, and that didn't, oh, there, yep, there we go, serial. <laughs> so now we each have different users, and having different users gives us some kind of fun options. Okay, now that we have the VT102 with its own separate user named serial, I can use the write command and send serial a message, and I can say hello, which will then appear on their screen. And if David writes back to me as root, he can now send me a message, and we can have this two-way conversation over serial, which could actually be done over a modem on dial-up. Now, if one party gets tired of this, they can do control D, and they will stop sending messages, but the other user can continue to send messages. And you can't stop them, kind of, except that you can. You can do message N, which sets you to no longer accepting messages. Message is N for me now. 
which means that they can't send you a message anymore, except they can, as long as the connection is still open. So since I'm in uh, admin here, I'm going to go ahead and figure out that they're right. PID is 249. I'm going to go ahead and kill that 249 and bam, dead. <laughs> and now if David tries to write to me again, he's given a permission denied. <laughs> So you can see how this is a pretty sweet setup from 1986 for Unix and a really easy to use form factor. And this is actually using, so this computer is kind of weird. We'll take a look inside of this in a minute um, while we have the chance to. This is using 16-bit ISA card slots. So this actually has an 8-bit IBM uh, Universal Asynchronous card. I think it's just called an async card, actually. Um, so it's just a DB25 serial port, and that's how this is being connected right now. But the RT has this card, which is a four-port asynchronous host card, which allows four terminals to be connected to this thing all at once, which would mean it can have five simultaneous users with this card because the local system here is a console. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that. So this is Linux, so if I do ls, uh, that's ld, ls-x slash dev, we can see devices in here. Now, this system right here, the, the monitor, which is actually just an MDA5151, and the keyboard, which is not quite a Model M, but similar, um, this whole interface is called console, and the VT102 here is TTY0. So if I do echo and say hello, and then pipe this out to dev console, we should see it appear. Uh, Dev console cannot create. Well, I'm not, I'm not quite sure about, but I can do it to over there. So let me do that right now. Uh, echo hello to dev tty. Well, no, you don't. You don't do anything over there right now. Um, so tty zero. I send that, and it did appear he was actually typing hello as I was. Uh, sending that so unfortunately this thing's kind of weird if i just hit up arrow the cursor literally moves up kind of like the frame buffer of a commodore um but it also doesn't work quite that way so like here i was trying to play around with uh using sue to assume his user but it saves the up arrow keys press scan codes and then executes those so it's really really weird there's also some other problems so there's a cool feature this has um I mentioned that we put in the um, the uh, IBM standard uh, async card here, and if I do show dev in the devices program here, we will see that that is in there. Um, <clears throat> actually, oh, TTY dev here after that. Um, we can see we have the asynchronous, well, it's the async card um, that's in there. Now, uh, where was I going with this? <laughs> The F3 key. Oh, yeah, the F3 key. So here's the thing. The software configuration, we have to return to the list of commands, press F3. F3 isn't working in here, but the F3 key does actually work. Just for some reason, not in here. So somehow the former owner of this thing had it configured. This is still the original install of AIX. Uh, had it configured with some kind of keyboard and shortcuts or something that kind of changes how this works. So what I actually have to do is come over here, do PS dash A, and then, no, oh, whoops, PS dash A, figure out the process ID for devices, and then I can do kill 270. And then once I run that over here, it didn't work because that's root. Um, oh, let's, let's do sue root because I gave the, uh, uh, serial user that power to root bingo now we can do kill 270 and i should have a space in there this keyboard is kind of bad ah yeah that old keyboards this is one of those uh high-tech stack poles which is in the deck keyboard so yay another one of those and if i run that terminated and now i'm back to the shell and if i hit f3 um well, it does actually do something. Um, why isn't it doing anything here? Can we, I think I'm actually logged in as serial still here. But anyway, it does 
work. It's just, yeah, the software configuration on this is pretty strange. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open the RT now because it is really, really cool and weird inside. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the VT-102 here as well. There we go. So it opens up like an AT, just like you'd expect, but inside it's quite a bit different. So, so this is the, oh, you just have to kind of lift up kind of hard on it. Well, while you're grabbing that, I'll quickly show. Here's that IBM Async card. So yeah, just very standard 8-bit ISA. There's just ISA slots. But then it has weird slots. This is the ESDI card to, for the ESDI 5 and quarter inch hard disk. What is it? I think it was 70 megs. Oh, I don't remember. That's something we could take a look at again in uh, AIX once it's booted. Oh man. That, this is the Enhanced that, Advanced Processor card. That is hilarious. Oh, wow. The full length card edge. It's awesome. Yeah, the Actually, IBM. I have one of every processor. The, the IBM metal canned chips in there. Those are strange. But, yeah, those are uh, Sims. Yeah, just soldered down. To me, this is a really cool computer because it's running a Unix derivative operating system, which in 1986 is just crazy. So to me, I, I, I really find this thing fascinating. Oh, that's the motherboard tower. Ah, yes. oh, Very bizarre. Is it like just five volts? Because there are only two colors or is it uh, maybe 12? I don't know, but it looks like there's another color there. Yeah, but that's that well, might be a signal or something. Barely anything. Yeah. You know how much what how, uh, what the wattage of the power supply is offhand? Lots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it'll say. No, nope, definitely doesn't say on the back. Probably well, says in the technical reference. Uh, there you can see the uh, sticker for the rear. So yeah, this thing's super cool. And this is just a um. This is just your plain Jane MDA card. Yep. Because again, to the it's 16 bit ISA slots, and yeah, that was a regular 5151 monitor. And this is your um, stre streaming tape drive controller. It takes from the tape drive that you can back up things to. Yes, yeah, so this does not currently have a tape drive. And then this is interesting. You've probably seen those PCI uh, postcode cards that you can stick in a computer that gives you debug information while starting up. This has it built in and will show different things, different codes as it's starting up that gives you a lot of information about the system. We'll show that as it's being restarted here. And also, as it's restarting, back here I have a serial LED tester, which just makes life really easy for debugging the serial stuff. And this was a little bit difficult to get set up. I'll show you how you configure a serial device on this once it's up and running again, because it has one of those kind of hand-holdy menus for that, like the user creation was, which is cool because of how old this is that it made it easy, but it was just kind of weird because I was expecting to have to manually set up STTY or Getty on here, but no, it just made it super easy, which is not an experience I'm used to when it comes to vintage computers. So while this is getting set back up, I unplugged the keyboard here. You can see that it has an interface cable very similar to the PC Junior, and I doubt that this would be compatible with the PC Junior's <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's like that, but in the form factor of a Model M. As a matter of fact, let's just, for the people who like to track serial numbers, go ahead and take a look at what it is on the back. So it's officially a Model M, but... Uh, if I remember right, the, the keyboard is actually RS-232. Oh, weird. And That's it cool. It sends commands. It has a microprocessor in the keyboard. And it sends the commands over the cable back and forth. And yeah, it's oh, okay. kind of a description of a technical reference, but All right. that's a gist. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, there's one other peripheral we want to take a look at. So <laughs> this thing had the option of a mouse. Matter of fact, I have it's. Uh... So this is. A like weird brochure pamphlet type thing for the RT and it shows lots of different things that you can get um, and this computer was designed in 1986 be usable with a mouse and they had that and several other peripherals so a little weird looking mouse there so one 
optional peripheral though was this tablet thing which I don't think we can get this set up um, it's very weird but that would somehow work as the mouse So this is a really cool Unix-based system running AIX, and it's not an 8088, and it's not a PC in any way. But it does have one interesting trick for working with PC files. So I'm going to put a DOS formatted 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk in the drive here, which is a kind of really weird drive that locks in and stuff. Um, this is not the drive that goes with it, so that's just not a really fair comment. But David here is going to read a file off of that floppy disk. So here he's accessing the directory listing for the disk, and there we go. So he's going to copy a file into the temp directory, and then we will be able to open it after copying. Oh, I don't have to put .txt. You do not. <laughs> That's a thing. That's Unix. So it's reading, and it's done. Now we can use VI after we confirm it's in there. Because AIX came with VI. Ah, so somehow the, uh, <laughs> the character set isn't quite right. So um, actually, that's something I could... I'll talk about once more in a little bit. Um, the character set for the deck uh, VT-102 here, or digital VT-102 isn't quite accurate for some reason, but that the program, the file here is correct. If I uh, CD to temp on the console here, oh, hold on, there was extraneous characters there. TMP, all right, LS, all right, VI star, because I'm lazy. And here we go. Now we can see that we have all of these wonderful lines of code. All right. And that was read off of this disk. Now, this could potentially run a DOS program. In this case, this is a uh, QBasic program, so maybe it could run QBasic. It has an ability to run DOS services but unfortunately, they were not installed on this system. Actually, we think they might have been removed. And these are the system disks for this computer. And good grief, there are a lot of them. And we don't actually know which one the DOS services are on. And that sounds like it would be a lot of work to get going. So for right now, that's just being left alone. All right, so there's one more thing I want to kind of show on this. So. This has an action key, which is kind of strange. I don't actually know what the origin of that is, but if we run open as a pre-command before a real command, so let's do, say, VI here. So we have VI open. I go into insert mode. We can write stuff, you know, do whatever. Um, I can do alt action and switch back to the shell, or I can do ls, because the open command opens it in a different buffer or window, however they call it, and you can switch between those with alt action, and I'm sure there are some other shortcut keys that allow you to switch directly to one, but this allows you to do multiple things. So you could open another instance of the shell, even, and then you can switch, but oh, whoops, oh, open, sh, and then you could have multiple shell instances going on at the keyboards fighting the air but <laughs> so and to expand on that yeah. you can actually have different things running actively in each of those windows oh and yeah run it in the background oh yeah so i don't we don't have an example of a long process job right now but you could totally do that um but it also if i quit out of this shell and then quit out of vim here oh of course to Exclamation point. Um, you can force uh, processes to the back, so I'll just do ls with the ampersand like normal, um, and now 
were there. So you can do that as well. Okay, so here is how the serial interface was configured on this. So this is going back to the devices program, which is kind of problematic. Um, yeah, it's a trap because <laughs> the F3 key will not get me out of here. Um, and what I'm going to do is go to change and I'm going to change the serial interface. So I'm TTY dev and then I will pick the only one that's in here. This is the single IBM async card. And again, if we had this card installed, we could get four serial terminals going at once, but this uses these 100 mil pitch male headers on here because you couldn't fit four DB9s or this is actually DB25. So that's slightly more difficult to get set up. Uh, but we'll do TTY zero here. And now you'll be able to see the configuration options we have available for getting this terminal working. So I have it set to VT100 mode and it shows it has more options, but uh, it'll actually take anything. So if I do VT here um, and try to configure it, I can put in any old gobbledygook and it takes it. So I don't actually know what options it has because it's not very specific about it. Now I'm gonna set that back to VT, uh, VT100 here. But you'll notice nowhere here does it give me a baud rate, and I'm really not sure where the baud rate is set. That might be STTY, but I wasn't, STTY is confusing. I wasn't able to figure out how to change the baud rate on the serial port um, for this device. Well, actually for that device, it's by default, I can't really quit here. This might actually show STTY for the actual, yeah, so this is showing STTY. Base dash A. Um, where is where are we? 90 900. I think this is for TTY zero, but when I run it on here, it shows it for console that virtual device. So yeah, it's just it, I don't know how to change it. Um, so this weird issue here might be because this is running at 19 200, which is towards the limit of what old terminal stuff can do. And if I could drop it down to 9600, that might fix it. But again, that's a problem. This is kind of like my DT1 actually, where I couldn't get that to work at 19200 at all. So that this is working even a little bit, I find impressive. Oh, so, but yeah, you don't have a ton of options here, but you have most of the ones you need. So this this was how you do serial uh, terminals. And it was actually really easy to set up. This walkthrough program is fantastic. Okay, so. RTFM, um, you can just set the terminal speed and now it's working fine. Here was that file this was not able to load before and now it has fully. So yes, this is now running at 9600 baud and it's working fine. The STTY command was just used to configure the connection speed there. So, oh, that's, that's now working way better and it's probably just gonna be more reliable now. <laughs> Anyway, I think that pretty much covers everything we can do here easily with the IBM RT. This is a really, really cool computer. Uh, that one's awesome. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time. Well, I know that wasn't my typical kind of video, but I was out of town with only my phone to shoot and a couple of hours to come up with a video and film it, so I think that that came out fairly well for the limitations I had. I thought that computer was just way too cool not to share, so I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed using it. And thank you to David for giving me that opportunity.